啊？喜欢吗？大家喜欢吗？ Hi, this is MXUX. That's the MIH Model X. Don't know if that's going to make it to America, but we're going to try to explain MIH in just a few minutes here. Here's Jack Chang. He's the head of MIH. Let's move on to the presentation. Just a quick word about Jack Chang here. He's former Foxconn, and Foxconn is really in charge of all of this. So let's just move forward here. Now, what we're talking about is a new chapter, the open and agnostic EV revolution. Um, Jack explains in this uh, presentation that the agnostic part means uh, it doesn't matter who's making the part. They're setting standards. Company A can make it. Company B can make it. Every part's interchangeable. Every company's inter interchangeable. Nobody's number one. Everybody's part of the team. It's the team that wins. So they're setting up standards uh, and the member companies are going to meet these specifications. And again, means they can't, they don't have to rely on one specific supplier for motors because it's agnostic. Can okay, in this next section, this is really what they're trying to do. Um, the PC and the smartphone have in common an open ecosystem modular design and common interfaces this is really what they are trying to set up for the battery electric vehicle mo uh, model that they are going to pursue and that is foxconn basically and lordstown lmx and foxconn uh, foxconn together um, they're looking to do exactly this they're going to build battery electric vehicles like personal computers and smartphones were built you know PCs, they had a standardized, the buses were all standardized, the connectors. Foxconn is Fox Connectors. That's what Foxconn started doing. They were built, making connectors for hard drives to motherboards and so forth. Uh, but the idea is here in both PCs and smartphones, all the, com all the common, uh, the, the basic components are all commonized. They're all standardized. The connections are all standardized. The branding takes place with the design and the software and so forth. Now they also have uh, Qualcomm down here. Qualcomm uh, simply develops a specification and a design for a product and sends it off to China. All the parts are sourced. Everything is, man they have no manufacturing. Uh, all they do is design. And this is the Foxconn model as well. So what the goal of MIH is, and now it's 2,500 companies, is to standardize these hard drive connections, standardize the batteries, standardize everything about the car, to leave it uh, development basically up to branding and design. This is what they want to do. This is the goal. Now this, this next section is a restatement of that. There's your MIH platform, which en encapsulates a structural battery pack and castings, by the way. It's open and it's agnostic, so it's open source. We've got all these companies uh, providing uh, components. It's agnostic. All the parts are interchangeable. And um, again, it's the PC and cell phone model or the Qualcomm router model if you will and the idea here is um, enabling, enabling brands again this common platform is branded to produce affordable EVs uh, fleet operators to easily manage their EV fleets because of the standardization and enabling mobility service providers to introduce innovative mo mobility at a service. In other words, uh, produce low demand models spe specific to market niches. This is the goal of MIH. Now with this slide, I'm going to start at the bottom four first. See the orange X? Those are the next two areas they're going to take MIH and Foxconn to robotics and digital health but at the moment they're only doing EVs which I have circled in red there and then uh, let's just start uh, at the bottom here let's this line going right to uh, left to right EV open source agnostic 
okay we've gone through these many suppliers doesn't matter who it is they're all building to the same standard and these are the types of vehicles they're talking about the second living space uh, on demand uh, shared mobility a diverse courier and delivery services the idea being uh, this is going to be a low-cost platform that's going to be able to uh, be modified and branded to meet these different market segments and demands. Now, in this circular uh, area down below, uh, these are the areas that MIH is working with. Smart cabin, autonomy, energy management, thermal management, body structure, powertrain, uh, security and over-the-air, and EEA. I don't know what that is. Electrical. Uh, anyway, the point is, in each of these topics, they have an operating group within MIH and a collection of companies that has agreed to work on these different areas. All of these areas are going to intersect and be able to work together under the same set of connections and APIs and so forth, just as you have all of the different components of a personal computer, all made by different manufacturers to different standards. They all fit together and it all works. This is what MIH is going to do for battery electric vehicles. So um, up at the top, they have increasing demand for BVs, acceptance of mobility as a service, which is your Uber and soon to be robo taxi, and increasing demand for purpose-built vehicles. I think the endurance in its perfect form is in its form right now is a speci specially built fleet vehicle. So uh, this next section is um, what they, uh, Jack uh, Chen said during this uh, pub, uh, this presentation um, that they've all been working together to put these standards together and they want to have something to show for their work. This is Project uh, X and this is business to business to consumer open and agnostic EV platform. So this MIH platform which has castings and a structural battery pack and I think probably hub motors or some type of hub motor um, is being used as the basis for this project X and this this model is basically set up now for distribution in Asia I don't know if it will meet US um, safety standards but uh, Likely, Lordstown Motors is involved in some way in the engineering of this vehicle, setting up the specifications for this vehicle, I should say. And this is a very cool vehicle. It's a modular vehicle. It's going to be ordered online. Like, you can pick one from column A and uh, this type of interior and this type of drivetrain and this color and so forth. It's going to be very low cost. It's going to be very customized. It's focused on initially a youth market. I have some video coming up on this, but this is the culmination of the MIH program. Uh, putting together a group of suppliers that can produce a vehicle so, uh, like this. Important moment now for me to announce is that MIH is no longer just becoming like a consortium. We need to do something differently to disrupt the industry, including as what Mr. Lu just said, build your own vehicle with the Project X. So this b 2 b to cs approach is open and agnostic. We will first have the three-seater, and then we will do a six-seater and a nine-seater with a common platform so you can expand, including the battery pack, including the motors, including all the user experience that you're going to be putting on to this platform. So how are we going to do it? How can we do it? First thing first, if this is a three-seater, and I can share with you this model that you look at outside, that's the first skeleton. We use our partner in Germany, FEV, to develop the skeleton. And then we're putting the powertrain solution, putting also all the MIH working group solution onto that platform. So if you compare 
this product with the other product in the marketplace, you might say, well, this is probably just another Cinquecento Fiat 500 or it's just another Mini Cooper. No, it's not just like that. It includes a share tooling. The fender and also the quarter panel are actually the same, but it's just flip. And I can only produce one tool that I can do for two body panels. The lighting, the display, front and the rear are somewhat symmetrical. So this will be shared as well. And it will be just like a Lego. And you can put it on and take it off. And it's very easy for maintenance and services. Getting exciting, right? Love Lego. <laughs> you love it. I like it too. But the younger generation know and understand what Lego is all about. Not for us, probably at this age. Sorry, Sydney and Mark. So I would like to uh, play a Project X review of video uh, first and then let you get a feel. Please. Build your own vehicle with Project X. Modular design with standardized interfaces allows flexible architecture for every vehicle segment. Enabling mobility service providers, fleet operators, and mobility brands to customize vehicles based on their needs. With the plug-and-play design approach, innovative products can be introduced in less time and cost fulfilling the needs of different audiences. This is Project X, a new chapter of the open and agnostic EV platform for the innovators by the innovators. Woo! Now you have the picture, right? The configuration, the body style, the shape, and I'm implying this vehicle is going to be come out, coming out. This is a historical moment that we want to share with you. So bear with me. The demo days, the biggest role is to display our first MIH vehicle. And this is... Okay, I'm just very, going to speak exciting. over this uh, video, uh, these couple of video clips. I think this is a very cool car. I think uh, if it can be engineered to meet uh, U.S. safety standards, I think it would be a hit. Uh, it reminds me of that uh, box-shaped uh, car that was put out by Toyota a while back. But uh, make no mistake, Foxconn is going to build this. This entire MIH effort is in support of Foxconn's CDMS, Contract Design Manufacturing Services. It'll be built by Foxconn, and there's a good chance that Lordstown Motors will be doing some or a lot of the engineering on this as well. I have another clip here. Uh, let me just uh, cue that up. They only want a thousand fashion vehicle EV. They can come to me. I build it for them. And it's agnostic. It's like a Lego. I can put it on and take it off easily. So this vehicle, if you like, um, it's got a very, very smart mind. It's young and dynamic. It's got a very strong heart. The powertrain is going to provide by our partner here, and we will be doing something also very, very lifestyle, including the display. We have our display. Fingernails, polish this color. Be my guest. Tell me. We change it for you. It's tailor-made. And the last but not the least, this AR experience outside, everybody have a chance to take a picture. This was taken in Foscom between Yang, Ms. Our Chairman Yang Liu and myself. We did it virtually with this vehicle. It's cute, but uh, it also can think and then make your life 
even, even more exciting. So with all this, I think that uh, you will see a lot of things are going on, and people started to ask me, finally, you got a play phone, so we can put something on, right? Exciting? Yes? There are things more exciting. So we're going to do three car, three seater, six seater, and nine seater. And the market, not only from Taiwan for three seater, we're going to go to Asia Pacific for the three seaters market, including India, Thailand, Indonesia, and Japan. So we got all the, all the well here for our partner from Japan here, include, in addition to Denso and so on. We are actually going to all these markets first. And 2024, we will build the demo car for the six seater and then for the nine seater. This is going to be also share platform, a very, very effective way of doing the industrialization and make sure that everybody have a chance to put your solution onto this vehicle. So, this is the Project X. Let us know your thoughts, because every, every comment comments. Okay, this is MXUX. That was uh, my presentation on the uh, MIH program. And uh, MIH is still a work in progress, too, but you can see they're moving right along. I hope that gives you a conceptual idea of what MIH is. And I think it's important to note that MIH is an initiative of Foxconn, and I'm repeating myself here, part of their uh, CDMS uh, uh, contract manufacturing design services model, of which Lordstown Motors is their key engineering partner at their world headquarters in Lordstown, Ohio, and likely to play a role in all of those efforts. Uh, what I have to follow here is a couple of pieces I put together as an update on the quality issue, uh, the connector issue with the endurance and the recall, take, take a listen to this. Hi, this is MXUX. We're just going to do a quick uh, update here on the uh, Lordstown Motors uh, quality issue. Oh, this is from Auto Week. Um, there's a shot of the endurance in production. That's really really a great looking uh, look how that's engineered how simple it is uh lordstown motors halts production now i think this is critical here they were planning on assembling 500 units with current funding okay this is before uh the full 170 million uh however that's structured with uh foxconn so we already had enough funding to do 500 units and uh, we had this recall after 19 units um experience performance and quality issues with certain endurance components that's plural <coughs> now um you know just speculation on my part it sounds like a plug uh, we know that each uh, uh, hub motor has three uh, three connections. One's, one's a power, one's a, a control, and one's the cooling. Um, they had mentioned it would uh, halt power to the motor. Uh, I imagine it's these plugs. They One end of these plugs terminate at the hub motor, uh, the other end of these plugs, these three different lines terminate at uh, the battery, uh, the controller, and the thermal system. Uh, I don't think the thermal system is an issue, it could be, but it, with the lo loss of power, I think it would either be the control line or the um, power line. Uh, it amounts to 19 vehicles working with suppliers. So, um, again, plural. Um, the formal decision to issue a recall was made in light of a specific electrical connection 
and that would be that could produce a loss of power while driving by deduction that would be the power connection to the hub motor at one end or another so i think um they've discovered a uh it sounds like they're working with suppliers perhaps the suppliers are not uh, reaching tolerances on the molding of these connectors and so forth but um that would be my definition of the issue um that's about it for this report i'm going to go through the um lordstown statement as well so uh it looks like uh, they're working with suppliers so it, it doesn't appear to be a design problem uh with the endurance certainly not a battery problem uh it would be between the connector to the hub motor of the either control line or the power line i guess i mean again i'm not an engineer so i don't know uh, but uh, certainly it implies a connection with the power line. And it sounds like uh, somebody's not making things to tolerances. And so they said they're going to do a rede redesign of the component, which is one solution. And then a redesign of the software uh, to deal with this uh, power outage. But... Uh, the more I read about this, and again, speculation on my part, you guys can do your own DD on this. It looks like um, uh, the manufacturer that we're, we're not making these connectors to a certain specification. So the redesign would make it an idiot proof uh, connection. And since they do make the hub motors and uh, they can change this connection if need be. Or they, they can just change the design of the connector to work better. Uh, but I think the real uh, good news here is they had funding to do 500 units. Of course, this is going to break in the funding. Not an ideal situation for the company or the stock. However, it is not the Ford battery problem, which is akin to the Bolt problem. Uh, battery problem in which GM had to replace every bolt battery and tell people to park their trucks outside that may be coming with Ford so we do not have that with the endurance and again this seems completely doable and I think they really uh, used a large amount of caution with this because of the SEC because of the DOJ because of the shorts and so forth so uh, Anyway, let's see what, what's going to happen with the earnings call on this. Very curious. Very curious to see how this worked with funding as well. Okay, this is the Lordstown Motors website. Uh, and this is their official release on this from the 23rd. Just going to go over some critical things here in addition to that last piece. Um... Endurance has experienced performance and quality issues with certain components. So that's a plural. That have led the company to temporarily stop production and customer deliveries. So again, a multiple uh, plural. Uh, working with suppliers. So this has been noted as a supplier problem, again, as I stated previously, or whatever, whenever that segment comes in before this or after this. So it's a supplier problem. So they're not saying it's a design problem. It sounds like the suppliers are not meeting the specifications uh, that uh, Lordstown has set up for this particular item. And as I said previously, they've got... Uh, let's say two electrical connections uh, of one type or another that go into the hub motors and those connect on each end. And I think that these connectors uh, could be the issue. I don't know. Speculation on my part. Uh, may include part design modifications. So 
Um, this implies redesigning or modifying the part from the supplier. Uh, retrofits means replacing the existing, let's say, harnesses, if that's the case. So redesigning the wires and connectors, um, retrofitting the finished 19 models, and updating the software uh, to deal with this power loss, which I'm sure uh, has already... I'm sure Steve Burns... I mean, they had this set up so that the truck could run on one motor if needed. Uh, I, I guess this is something else that's going to have to do with all four motors, perhaps enabling towing and stuff in this situation and so forth, or whatever the case may be. Um, so they have voluntarily did a recall. Uh a specific electric connection, a specific electric connection. So that could result in a loss of propulsion while driving. So the recall, there may have been multiple. So there are multiple of these lines with, with the connection on each end. The one that uh, supplies the power is the one they uh, issued the um, recall for. And Lordstown is working with the supplier network to implement corrective action that the company believes will address this issue. So it sounds like these connectors were not made to spec. And I think they're going to do an idiot proof redesign of the connectors. And I think that's going to be the solution. This is speculation on my part again. There's, a, there's one connection on each end of these lines, and these go to the hub motors. I am assuming that this is the problem. does not sound like a major problem to me, although a critical component. But uh, it's a math problem. They should be able to solve it. Uh, it didn't come through in testing, it appears, because the units that were tested, the endurance units that were tested had connectors that were made to the proper specification so it looks like when they ramped up uh, the production of these connectors uh, they had quality control issues at the manufacturer and that in turn caused this problem with the endurance this is what i deduce from all this uh they're going to Resolve potential issues before resuming production and current shipments. So, um, how long will this take? I don't know. They're going to certainly be very careful about this. Uh, will it take a quarter, uh, a full quarter to read to do this and push production back? Uh, we're supposed to be starting production. Um, in March well we've got another month let's say uh, uh, Hightower had said Q2 of 23 we're gonna start ramping up full production and it was the 500 units before that this is certainly gonna stall the 500 units we don't know how many uh, they said 19 trucks total so we've got uh, 480 trucks to build in this batch and then start the ramp uh will it uh stop or pause production it's a question they're gonna have to redesign test the redesign um let's see uh again we're gonna have to see what happens during the earnings call and it's going to be a critical earnings call. They had the funding to produce 500 units. This obviously is going to cost some money. Uh, but it sounds like the suppliers are going to bear the brunt of that. But the engineering staff is going to have to devote time to this at Lordstown. There's going to have to be testing of the new units and so forth. Unless this is a very clear-cut problem where they, you know use the wrong molding dye to make these and uh, that type of thing 
But uh, anyway, we're going to have to listen very closely to Hightower. Uh, I don't know. I have a Model X video coming out, the MIH model. I'm sure that uh, Lordstown is playing some role in the engineering of this Model X. It appears to me that that Model X is going to use hub motors. And it's important to note that Lordstown Motors has the IP for the hub motors. They specifically mentioned it in the last agreement with Lords, uh, with Foxconn that they were not going to sell that or license it out. And in fact, Foxconn is running the production line of the hub motors at the Lordstown facility, although uh, Lordstown Motors owns it. So this is all very critical to Fox implies to me that this Model X and the MIH platform uh, is going to employ hub motors. And likely, uh, since the Lordstown Motors is the a member of the MIH platform, the control uh, IP uh, from Lordstown Motors is going to be used to control those hub motors. That would be my speculation. Um, Anyway, uh, that's the update. So we're going to just have to sit on tender hooks here. We don't have much longer to wait and see what Hightower and Niavaji say about this, uh, how they handle this. And we're, we're going to need to know time frames. Of course, funding is always an issue with Lordstown Motors. Um, again... Uh, Ford is coming up on a month. Uh, on the 7th, uh, it will be one month that their production has been halted. They have traced their problem to the battery manager, uh, battery manufacturer SK in uh, Alabama. I believe that's right. Uh, and, you know, they're using these prismatic or these pouch batteries uh the endurance uses the same battery cells as the model 3 uh tesla these pouch batteries they are problems this is what caused again i'm repeating myself the bolt recall they have to be packaged in heavy metal boxes which and then these boxes are stacked into a battery pack it creates a lot more weight uh, and uh, there's more because of the nature of it all you know it's very easy to to have one of these tabs that connect these batteries together twist and so forth and i think that's what's happened at ford i think ford may be looking at a recall i don't know uh, of their other models i don't know how they can say that None of these other models have this error when, um, you know, the, they were all, all the batteries came from the same manufacturer. I mean, it's very akin to the jam bolt recall, and I think it's going to have the uh, same out, outlook. Uh, I think there's the 20,000 vehicles they have out, I think they're going to be recalled, and I think their battery pack's going to be replaced. And... Um, if I were a fleet manager, I'd rather have a plug go bad than a battery go bad, but you don't want anything to go bad. You want 999, 69's reliability on that stuff. Let's see how uh, Neovaji and Hightower handle this. Uh, both of them are pros. Neovaji, of course, is a pro with the uh, automotive parts supply business, and uh, Hightower, of course, is a pro with the auto industry and as i said i don't know if they're going to bring in the guy they hired who is a top end quality control guy who i suspect uh got all this together but let's see how they do um no problems are the best problems relatively speaking uh this is a lesser problem than ford is facing